beats the I, universe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm somewhere in between. Between being a literal witch, <laughs> literal witch, I'm not kidding, and being like... The role of astrology in your life has meaning, right? For sure. I mean, even tarot cards. When yeah, I went to the studio, yeah, yeah. you gave me a reading. You've been doing readings on set. Yeah. What do you look to astrology for? Is it understanding of what you're going through? Is it an understanding of what will be? Yeah. Looking to something bigger than us to kind of help us make sense of it. Does that make sense? It is. When you're born, Saturn's in a certain position, and it takes 29 and a half years for Saturn to return to that position. And when it returns to that position, you are faced with deep awareness of oneself and a confronting of patterns, correct? Yes. And a wake up. Course correction, one Course would say. Course correction. Yeah. To when understand you... this connection, one must delve into the occult significance of Saturn. Known in esoteric circles as Father Time, Saturn is depicted with his scythe, representing both creation and destruction. While many in the contemporary world see planets as mere celestial bodies, the occult knows them as energies, forces, and deities. Why the obsession with Saturn? The elite powers that be, they believe that by worshipping Saturn and tapping into its energy, they can harness its power. Evidence of this can be found in numerous symbols and emblems, corporate logos, movies, and pragmatic aspects of our lives, like our financial markets. J.P. Morgan, the titan financier, was no stranger to these connections. Many recall his statement, Millionaires don't use astrology, billionaires do. Far from a casual remark, it reveals Morgan's genuine belief in the ties between planetary movements and market ebbs and flows. He leaned on astrologers, tapping into age-old wisdom to strategize in business, drawing connections from the stars to Wall Street. Now, Raymond Merriman, a stalwart in financial astrology today, brings ancient practices to contemporary tables. With an impressive career spanning decades, Merriman's work bridges the celestial with the economic, gaining nods of respect even from skeptics. Morgan's legacy is proof that some elite figures don't just understand these connections, they harness them. Saturn, Latin, Saturnus was a god in ancient Roman religion and a character in Roman mythology. He was described as a god of generation, dissolution, plenty, wealth, agriculture, periodic renewal and liberation. After the Roman conquest of Greece, he was conflated with the Greek titan Cronus. Saturn is Satan, Cronus. They think Saturn once used to be a star, the fallen angel, he who shone brighter than them all. At the south pole of Saturn is what looks extremely much like an eye, Lord of the Rings. At the north pole. As you can see, there is a six-sided hexagon. This is where we get the number of the beast, six, from. And the hexagon is also a 2D image of a 3D cube. This is called the cube of Saturn. The large black cubes of Saturn are displayed as markers around the world in places where the powerful Luciferian elites wish to display their power, symbolism and allegiance to Satan slash Lucifer without the general public even being aware of their meaning and significance. Think yourself as a space traveler who visits Earth in a fictional post-apocalyptic world, digging through the rubble of the once thriving planet, you come across a copy of a US $1 bill with the two-sided great seal of the United States joined in the middle by the phrase, in God we trust. Upon consideration, you ask yourself, what God did this refer to? And with no preconceptions, you allow the symbolism on the seal to speak for itself, from which you quickly determine that this had been a great culture who worshiped Egyptian and Greek deities especially a particular solar one whose all-seeing eye glares from the top an unfinished Egyptian pyramid. Upon further investigation into the specific beliefs of the strange group whose members had influenced the Great Seal, you discover from their highest masters, including one illustrious Albert Pike, that the sun god they venerated so highly had been known to them at various times in history by the names Apollo, Osiris, and Nimrod, in quote. Thompson, the designer of the Great Seal's final version, condensed line 625 of Book 9 of Virgil's Aenid, which reads, 
Jupiter Omnipotus, Adasibus, Anoet Coeptus, which means all-powerful Jupiter favors the daring undertaking, he condensed that down to Anoet Coeptus. He approves our undertaking. While the phrase Novus Ordo Seclorum, a new order of the ages, was adapted in 1782 from inspiration that Thompson found in a prophetic line in Virgil's Eclogue 4, which reads Magnus ab integro seclorum nascator ordo from Virgil's Eclogue 4, line 5, the interpretation of the original Latin being, and the majestic role of circling centuries begins anew. Now that phrase, is from the Cume Sibyl, a pagan prophetess of Apollo identified in the Bible as a demonic deceiver, and it involves the future birth of a divine son spawned from a new breed of men sent down from heaven when he receives the life of gods and sees heroes with gods commingling. According to this prophecy, this is Apollo, the son of Jupiter, or Zeus, who returns to earth through mystical life given to him from the gods, when the deity, Saturn or Jupiter, returns to reign over the, the beginning of the prophecy, referenced on the great seal of the United States, here's what we read. Now the last age by Kume Sibyl Sung has come and gone, and the majestic role of circling centuries begins anew. Justice returns, returns old Saturn's reign, with a new breed of men sent down from heaven. Only do thou at the boy's birth, in whom the iron shall cease, the golden race arise. Befriend him, chaste Lucina, tis thine own Apollo reigns. He shall receive the life of gods and see heroes with gods commingling, and himself be seen of them, and with his father's worth reign over the This world. means that the great seal of the United States is a prophecy, hidden in plain sight by the Founding Fathers for more than 200 years, foretelling the return of a terrifying demonic god that seizes control of Earth in the new order of the ages. This supernatural entity was known and feared in ancient times by different names, Apollo, Osiris, and even farther back as Nimrod, whom Masons consider to be the father of their institution.